Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Nave News Update. It's Friday, March 27th, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. The sales tax on cookies, chips, soda, and other junk foods sold on the country's largest American Indian reservation is going up. Navajo Nation President Ben Shelley signed legislation March 20th to increase by 2 percent the sales tax on food with little to no nutritional value starting next year. No other sales tax on the Navajo Nation specifically targets the spending habits of consumers. It will remain in effect until 2020, but the Navajo Nation Council can extend that. Navajos advocating for a junk food tax said they wanted to pass a bill that could serve as a model for Indian Country to improve the rates of diabetes and obesity among tribal members. The bill cited statistics from the Navajo Area Indian Health Service that said about one-third of Navajos are diabetic or pre-diabetic, and the obesity rate for some age groups is as high as 60 percent. Diabetes was the fourth leading cause of death in the Navajo area from 2003 to 2005. The $1 million a year that the additional tax is expected to generate will pay for projects including farmers markets, vegetable gardens, and wellness and exercise equipment in the tribe's 110 communities. Another bill to eliminate the tribe's 5% sales tax on fresh fruit and vegetables sold on the Navajo Nation went into effect October 1st. A Native American language school from grades 6 to 12 will open in North Carolina in a bid to keep Cherokee culture alive. The Southern Association of Colleges and Schools accredited a new division of New Kidowa Academy in January. The school has been operating since 2004, but up until now only taken students from early childhood through fifth grade. The Crazy Horse Memorial in South Dakota will light up blue for World Autism Awareness Day on April 2nd. The monument will be lit up starting around 10 p.m. on that day, and admission to the memorial will be waived after 6 p.m. Each April 2nd, Autism Speaks celebrates Light It Up Blue along with the international autism community in commemoration of the United Nations sanctioned World Autism Awareness Day. To join the movement and shine a light on autism, you can go to autismspeaks.org. A documentary by a Western Michigan University professor produced with the help of WMU students puts Native American women filmmakers on the other side of the camera. The 33-minute documentary is the first installment in a three-part series titled Matriarchal Voices, Stories of Indigenous Women Filmmakers. The project has taken Professor Mitraletti to four Canadian provinces and 12 U.S. states. Episode 1, titled Spider Woman's Call, features Native media makers Dorothy Christian, Tracy Deer, Helen Haig Brown, Mona Smith, Valerie Redhorse, and Christine Welsh, and gives their unique perspectives on producing and directing. Episodes 2 and 3 are currently in production. Larry Yazzie will play the pivotal character of Nolly in the upcoming Hades Awaits. Yazzie has been a performer all of his life who travels the world sharing his native culture. Set to film in the summer, this much-anticipated picture looks to push the boundaries of the modern Western. For more information, you can check out HadesAwaits.com. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Navy News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.